Let's edit this image. First, we're going to use Lightroom to do some basic adjustments, followed by a little bit of masking. Then we're going to shift the colors to create a more pleasing color palette. And finally, I'm going to use a little bit of Photoshop to add some more specific adjustments. So if you want to follow along, feel free to download the raw file from the link in the description of the video. And now let's begin. We want to start with the basic adjustments. So let's expand the basic panel. What I have in mind for this scene is I want to make it really, really vibrant and colorful, add some dreamy glow to the highlights of the scene and shift the colors. So I'm going to start by changing the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Landscape, which as you can see will already bring up the base saturation quite a bit and it will also help making the darkest parts of the image a little bit brighter. Now let's adjust the tones. What I'm going to do first is to bring down the exposure very gently. And I'm doing this to recover more details from the highlights because I think bringing down the exposure looks better than bringing down the highlights in this particular case. But I still also want to bring down the highlights very, very gently to further get out more details from the brightest parts of the image. Of course, this will make the whole scene look a lot darker and we do run into issues looking at the histogram. You can already see some clipping. So I want to fix that by bringing up the shadows and thus we're just bringing back details from the darkest spots. We can further improve this effect by bringing up the blacks. I think right around here looks good. I don't want to raise the blacks too much because then we are losing too much contrast and the image becomes too soft. Now that we have adjusted the tones, what I like to do after that is to play around with the white balance because now we have a better idea of the scene. So in this case, I might actually bring down the temperature just a little bit, introducing some more coldness. I think it just looks better this way. Let's make this image look a bit sharper by bringing up the texture and we can bring up the clarity, which will affect the midtones contrast. And finally, we can bring up the vibrance. And that is the image after the basic adjustments we can compare to before real quick. And one thing you will notice is the way higher saturation. This is due to the change profile and also, of course, because of the added vibrance. Now let's do a little bit of masking. What I want to do with the masking is to make the sky more dramatic by giving it more contrast. I also want to add a little more detail in the center of the image and I do want to add some glow coming in from the right side of the scene. Let's start with something simple. Let's change the sky. I'm going to use a simple sky selection which should work pretty good on this scene. I don't want to change the whole sky. I just want to make the darkest parts of the sky darker. That means we need to modify this mask. I'm going to click on subtract and I'm choosing a linear gradient and with this linear gradient I'm taking out pretty much all of the right side of the sky like this. And once we set up with the mask, what I'm going to do next is to bring down exposure to make the sky darker, just like this. When we are making things darker, like in this case the sky, the saturation is changing. The colors are becoming more intense and this is a problem for this area because right now the blue tones start to become overwhelming. So we want to change that. I'm going to create a sky selection and with that sky selection, I'm going to bring down the saturation quite a bit, toning down the blue tones. We can always further adjust the colors of the sky later on with a bit of color grading, but for now, this should be enough. I do think I want to keep working on the sky. Let me choose a color range mask. With that color range mask, I want to target the far left side of the sky because this area is a little bit brighter than this area right here. And that's because I use the polarization filter for this scene, which has this kind of ugly effect sometimes in the sky. So let's click right in here with the color range mask. You can see the color range mask is targeting a little bit too much. I'm going to tone down the refine slider here and see if we can fix it that way. Probably not. What I'm going to do as well is to subtract a linear gradient, taking out the right side of the sky like this. I'm also going to subtract a linear gradient coming up from the bottom part because there are also areas which are which I don't want to be affected. But with that setup, I'm going to bring down the exposure and thus bring this area more in line with the center part of the sky. I think we can make the sky a little bit darker even so let's use another sky selection mask and again I'm subtracting the right side and let's bring down the exposure. 
I do want to make the sky rather dark because I really love this effect against these bright clouds. So right around here looks great to me. At this point we can add some glow coming in from the right side. Therefore I'm going to use a radial gradient. Uh, let's move the mask panel and I'm going to create a radial gradient like this. I'm going to place the center outside of the image and I'm also going to place the center right on the horizon level. Maybe let's make it a little bit bigger. How I'm going to add this glow is by increasing the blacks. I'm also going to bring up the whites, making this area brighter. And I'm going to bring down the dehaze, which will further improve that glow effect. All right, looking good. Maybe I need to make it a little bit smaller though. But that's looking great. I think I'm going to add another radial gradient right away for that part on the right side. I'm making it a little bit smaller. And with this one, I just want to target the sky. So I need to get rid of the ocean from this mask. I'm simply going to use a linear gradient and drag it up like this. We have a hard edge on the ocean horizon level. So that's easily done. In here, what I'm going to do is to bring up the whites. And thus we're adding some nice contrast between this bright part and the ocean. And next I want to work on the center. Therefore, let's use another radial gradient. I'm pretty much covering this dark part right here over that hole. I want to make this brighter so we can see a few more things in here. I'm simply going to raise the exposure for that. Paying close attention to the histogram as I bring up the exposure because we don't want to introduce any clipping in the brightest parts. But this is looking good so far. Now what I don't like is the bottom left corner since this is a bit too bright and it's kind of drawing the eye away from the center. I'm going to use a linear gradient covering this left corner right here and I'm going to bring down the whites just so this area isn't as distracting. Let's maybe make this linear gradient a little bit smaller but this is looking great and there we have the image after the masking adjustments. So let's take a look at before with our basic adjustments applied compared to after. The added contrast really helps to draw in on the viewer's eye right where it belongs and overall it just looks a lot better with much more contrast. So now let's continue with the color grading and here is where we are going to shift the colors. I'm going to start this in the color mixer and I want to start in the hue panel. So what I want for this shot color wise is I want to have some intense orange tones coupled with some nice blue cyan-ish color tones. These two colors work really, really nice together. Now, how can we set this up? We have a lot of orange and yellow in the foreground already, but we can make it more intense. For that, we can bring down the yellow hue, turning all yellow tones more into an orange color tone. So let's bring it down quite a bit. Right around here looks great. I'm also going to bring down the orange hue very, very gently. And with just these two changes, we already made the colors look much, much better. Let me deactivate the color mixer to see the difference from before. Now you can see the foreground does have some kind of greenish color cast to after. What we can do is to bring down the blue hue and this will give the blue sky and of course the ocean some more of a cyan color tone. But we need to be careful because we of course don't want to overdo this effect. Now I'm gonna head over into the saturation tab. We want to tone down some of these colors. So I'm going to start with the blue saturation. Let's bring it down a lot. So at this point, the sky looks much more pleasing and is not as overwhelming as before. Then I'm also going to bring down the yellow saturation a bit so the foreground won't become too saturated. And I do want to bring up the orange tones very gently. Perfect. And we can, of course, also use the luminance tab with which we can control the brightness of each color. I want to make the foreground slightly brighter so I can simply pull up the orange luminance. Of course, I need to be careful again to not introduce any clipping, but this is looking good. And we can bring down the blue luminance to further add contrast, especially in the sky. Let's do some split toning in the color grading tab. I'm going to start with the highlights. And of course, we want to make the highlights look warm. So I'm going to set up the hue in that way, bringing it up somewhere in the, in the yellow color range. And let's increase the saturation. Done. Nice. And then let's also do that for the midtones. Again, I'm using a warmer color tone for the midtones. 
in the same color range and I'm going to bring up the saturation quite a bit more. Okay, this is looking good. And for the shadows, I want to keep some kind of color contrast. So I'm going to use a cold color tone, but I'm only using very tiny amounts of saturation just to have a very subtle hint of blue in the shadows. Wonderful. Now, the last thing I'm going to do for the color grading will be changing the calibration tab down below here. What really helps with the cyan and orange color tones is to bring down the blue primary hue, which is something I do for most of my images. So let's bring it down a lot. And let's also bring up the saturation. All right, as you can see, the calibration tab does have a huge impact on the colors and the overall look of this image. I can deactivate this particular effect to see the difference from before to after. We have much more intense colors now. Now, the only thing left to do in Lightroom is the sharpening in the details panel. So let's go in here, bring down the radius, increase the details all the way up. Then I'm increasing the masking as well while holding down the Alt key. And then let's bring up the amount of sharpening. Perfect. So that's pretty much the image after the Lightroom adjustments. Comparing it to before, you see it's a huge difference and I could actually stop at this point, but I do want to add some more special effects to this shot, which I'm going to do in Photoshop. So let's open up this image in Photoshop. I'm going to right click on the thumbnail down below, go to edit in and choose Photoshop. And the first thing I want to do is to clean up this image. So let me duplicate this layer by hitting Ctrl J and I'm using the remove tool. I really wish this guy would stand in a different way because this would give a nice sense of scale. However, in this position, its uh, I don't think it looks that good. So I'm going to get rid of him. Just going to brush over this dude. And let's also remove the other people in the image. All right, I think I also want to get rid of these trees. And once we're done selecting everything, just hit the confirm icon. Okay. Photoshop inserting lighthouses in the back is really strange. Let's just brush over these real quick and again confirm. All right, wonderful. At this point, let's enhance that glow. I'm going to duplicate that layer once more hitting Ctrl J. Then let's go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. I'm going with something around 50 pixels and let's hit OK. Right away after applying this effect, go to edit, choose Fade Gaussian Blur, and under the mode, we want to choose Lighten. Then we want to bring down the opacity of this effect. I think 30% looks good. Hit OK. And now we have this glow effect applied globally on the whole image. I actually don't want to have this effect on the shadows. So we're going to use something called Blend If. Right click on the image, go to Blending Options, and right here, we are going to use something called Blend If. You want to hold down the Alt key and then click on the right part of this arrow. Then drag it to the right side. What this will do is it will mask out the darker areas of this layer. So the glow effect we just applied is only on the brighter pixels of this layer. Let me hit OK. And let me show you this effect by turning off this layer. This is without the glow. And here we have the image with the glow. Now take a look at the shadows. As I turn it off, you can see the shadows aren't really changing. Only the highlights will have this glow effect applied on top. If you want, we can make this effect stronger by just duplicating this layer again, hitting Ctrl J. Now I'm going to further enhance some of the brightest areas. So let me create a new layer and I'm going to switch its blending mode to soft light. Then I'm grabbing the brush by pressing B. Let's make the brush a little bigger. I'm going to bring down the brush opacity a bit to around 15%. And then we need to pick up a color from the area which we want to change. So I want to further add the glow to the brightest spots. So right around here, maybe I'm going to pick up this color tone by holding down the Alt key and clicking right in here. You see the foreground color has changed. I'm going to make it a little bit brighter and less saturated. Now with the foreground color setup and the brush active, I'm going to paint over these brightest spots very, very carefully to introduce this very vibrant glow effect on top. Okay, this is looking great. 
I'm really careful to not overdo it, but I still want this effect to be nicely visible. And finally, I do think I do want to bring up the saturation a little more. So let's use a vibrance adjustment layer and bring up the vibrance. All right, this is looking great. And there we have the finished image. So I hope this little tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you want to add anything or if you have any questions about anything in the editing, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much for watching this video.